You want to lower the tax. You want to implement a flat tax. No, you no. I no. thought you liked the flat no. tax. I read in a couple of interviews. The problem with the flat tax is it's sort of the same. I actually believe that people, as they make more and more money, can pay a higher percentage. Okay. How high? To be honest. Since bursting onto the political scene several weeks ago amidst the various tumultuous tweets and admitting no one whines better than he does, Donald Trump has been light on actual issues. Until now. But has he already pulled something of a mini stumble and will his rabid devotees care one bit on their way to the White House? He drives the conversation forward in the pages of the Washington Post as part of their feature, The Fix, dedicated to anything and everything across the political landscape. Welcome Philip Bump to the hard line. Joined by veteran multimedia reporter, now senior contributor at The Federalist, her latest effort pointing out the people backing Donald Trump are anything but stupid. D.C. McAllister, I want to thank you both for joining us. And we just heard from Donald in an interview, but I want to play one more for you here and then talk about this. In this interview, same interview, he detailed what the United States would do under his watch to take out ISIS and use their source of funding to benefit the veterans. Here's what he said. We lost thousands of people 5, in, in Iraq. Well, and we have people we're walking around without an arm, without a leg, and worse Give than them that. the money. Give them millions. And by the way, that's peanuts compared to what you're talking about in terms well, of money. Right. Is that Give enough? them a lot of money and keep a lot of money. Philip, let me come to you first. Is it just possible here that Donald Trump has just played this brilliantly? The setup the social media, the fact that he throws that passion out there, and now he gets down to the issues. He's basically doing it a 180 from what every other candidate has ever done. So is it possible he's just gotten it dead right? Uh, I, I, there's no question he's played this brilliantly. I mean, I think that uh, Trump's rise is definitely attributable to people seeing in him personally something that they don't see in the other candidates, a sense of realism, a sense of energy uh, that they don't get from standard po politicians. And you're absolutely right. He's only now getting around to detailing what his policy positions were. And I think it's actually to his advantage because a lot of the positions he has held over time are not strongly conservative positions. But now he gets to have people already committed to him, already loving him, and frankly, already defending him from the media that's looking at him and kind of shrugging. Those people are already on his side. And now when he says things like, oh, I am, you know, my feelings about Planned Parenthood aren't that strong, aren't, aren't in the, you know, the same as traditional conservative views, they're more willing, I think, to give him a pass just because they're already vested in his candidacy. All right. Now, you mentioned Planned Parenthood. D.C., that's exactly what I wanted to ask next, because there are a lot of conserva uh, conservatives who say that's it with Planned Parenthood, defund it, walk away. Yet Donald Trump said, well, wait a minute, maybe there's some things that we need to save here and just go after abortion. Is that a misstep? And, and in the end, will it really make any difference? Because it seems no matter what he says, his fans drive right through it and say, go, Donald, go. I think it will be a misstep for some, for the more conservative of his supporters. Uh, they'll go to other candidates who are also outside the beltway, but also um, you know, represent more conservative views. But not for those candidates who are invested. They still like his voice. They like that they speak for that he speaks for them, and that he has the passion to fuel their anger and that to represent them and to get the media and to get the politicians in Washington who they feel don't represent them. So even when he says something like this about Planned Parenthood, they say, well, he's at least partially wanting to address the issue, and but he's willing to uh, go after ISIS and he wants to uh, make us stronger against China. So they look at the other issues as kind of balancing it out. And anyway, a lot of his supporters are not real conservative. I mean, he has a lot of moderates and a lot more millennials than the Tea Party did back in 2008 and 2009. D.C., let's put it this way. If you're an aspiring politician or even one right now who wants to move ahead, you need to look at what Donald Trump did, how he's doing it, and say, I really can't stand it, but he's got the 21st century knocked at this point. You've got, it looks almost as if, to many ways, you're going to have to start copying the Trump method if you want to get ahead in politics. Would you agree? Well, I don't know if you can copy him because people are looking for some authenticity in their candidates and at least some realism there. And but what they need to do, and this is very important, is they cannot dis and dis, they can't disrespect Donald Trump's supporters. They can't go around calling them stupid, narcissistic, ignorant, and and then expect them to come over to their side and vote for their guy. That just makes no sense. So that's the first thing they need to stop doing is don't dis the people who are supporting this man. Then they all they need to do is go toe to toe with him and say. Yeah, I understand your passion. I understand why you represent the American people and that you're an outsider like I am or like I want to be, but I have better ideas. And just keep hitting home with those better ideas, and I think those in, in their base will, will come around.
Philip, let's look at two of the other candidates here. Carly Fiorina has written a blistering attack on Hillary Clinton here, basically saying, what have you done as Secretary of State or anywhere else for that matter? Mike Huckabee has now gone after Hillary Clinton as well. In your opinion, if you are one of those opponents, is that what you need to do right now? Let Donald Trump say what he says, rail what he says, but you've got to get this over to Hillary as fast as you can or you're going to get buried by him. Well, I think the question is really how these candidates are going to make a name for themselves and manage to stay above water with the Republican electorate at large. I think the, the, the common assumption at this point, and every common assumption about Trump has been wrong so far, I will admit up front, uh, but the common assumption at this point is that Donald Trump has a base of support that's going to be fairly steady. And as other candidates start dropping out, their support is going to go to other people. And so someone will rise up past Trump at the very, you know, if, if nothing else happens beforehand, someone else will pass him that way. So I think what Fiorina and Huckabee are trying to do is, without going after their opponents, their Republican opponents, uh, which it's a little early to do really hard attacks unless you're going after Donald Trump, which a lot of people have been willing to do. Uh, but what I think they're trying to do is just stay in the conversation, make some headlines to make sure that they can at least stay above the, the lower tier pack and therefore be one of those candidates, ideally, that people switch to as people start dropping out. D.C., Donald Trump is bombastic. He says what's on his mind at all times. How do you think he'll play in Iowa? I think he'll play. Well, he's playing well in Iowa. And I, you know, I think he, he's representing people who feel like they don't have a voice, even if they don't like his style. They like that he's outside of Washington, and he's the guy famous for saying you're fired. And so he, they want to fire people in Washington. They don't trust them. You know, so I think he'll play well. But what's interesting is that look at who's number two, uh, Carson, and a lot of the a That's lot of a the shocker. Polls. That's a shock. It's a shocker to a lot of. It's not a shocker to me at all. Uh, you know, being back in the Tea Party days, you know, we he represents what we stand for. He's more of the appeal of the base than what even Donald Trump is. He's that more calm Kennedy. He's outside, but he's the exact opposite of Donald in style. But he's still opposing Washington, and that's what these candidates need to see. They need to oppose the people who are not doing anything to actually make this country more secure, to secure our future for our children, to actually do what they say they're going to do when they go to Washington. And they need to say, earn people's trust. And that's one thing you see in Carson. He has America's trust. Donald Trump has it too, but in a different way. His is more of, hey, trust me, like a salesman. Don, um, Carson has a very authentic trustworthiness. All right, Philip, I only got 30 seconds left. Is it fair to say now that we can look at the scoreboard and say, okay, Rand Paul, first victim of Donald Trump? Uh, it's tough to say who the first victim of Donald Trump is. I think that, you know, uh, Donald Trump likes to say that Lindsey Graham and Rick Perry were knocked out of the debate by him. I don't think that's accurate. I think Rick Perry is the first victim of 2016. I'm not sure that you can attribute that to Trump. I think Rand Paul had problems beforehand as well. I think Donald Trump is definitely going to take credit for it. Uh, we're going to have you both back again because, as I keep saying to so many people we have on panels here, the fun is really just beginning. Philip Bump, you can read him in the Washington Post. D.C. McAllister, read her in The Federalist. I thank you both for joining us. We'll talk again real soon. Now, we've talked about Donald Trump. Remember the cap that Donald Trump's been wearing at all his campaign stops? Oh, come on, let's be honest now. You want to get your own copy, don't you? It's the Make America Great Again. It's a free offer here. Simply put, all you have to do is call or go online. Call 800-485-4350. 800-485-4350. Or go to Newsmax.com forward slash Trump cap, and you can get your own. This is not an endorsement of Donald Trump for the campaign, but it's a chance for you to show that you endorse the candidate. Next, opening the cage doors on the political animal. Carly Fiorina taking off the gloves. And Scott Walker shows a real hint of serious cronyism. Coming up next on the Fastest 60 Minutes of News, The Hardline.